Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. At some point, we all deal with this one thing, and maybe you're dealing with it at this very moment. How do you navigate through this thing that can really change your life, be impactful? It's it's pain. And there's all different types that we deal with, whether it's an injury, you deal with pain from a disease, maybe it's chronic. Um, this guy helps people with that all the time. Manage that pain, deal with it psychologically. He is an amazing psychologist. Dr. Roger Levine is back with us. Roger, welcome. How are you? I'm great. <clears throat> Good to see you again, Steve. You too. Yeah. And it's a fact of life. doesn't matter how old you are. You're going to deal with pain at some point. Um, how does that look for you when you work with people? Or I guess we should, you know, right out of the gate, let's talk about the different types of pain that uh, you can help people manage. Well, I think, you know, people come to me for different reasons. Most often uh, they come to me because of chronic pain or because their medication isn't working. Um, but uh, learning how to handle pain uh, helps everyone. So uh, I teach it as part of my mind body uh, skills group. Tell me about that group. I didn't even know you you teach that group. Yeah, on Wednesday uh, afternoons, I have a mind body skills group where we learn how to relax or how to manage anxiety or depression or any of those kinds of things and how to learn different mind body skills. For the most part, it's for people who uh, want to continue to progress with their mind body skills beyond the initial therapy or um, just want to keep learning new things. Hmm. The types of pain that we're talking about can be pretty much anything. It, uh, you know, disease, uh, injury, uh, chronic that you're dealing with for a period of time. When you work with somebody to help them manage that pain, is that method pretty much the same? Doesn't matter what kind of pain it is. No, there's, uh, there's some differences based upon the type of pain and uh, where the pain is and what's creating the pain. The big difference between, uh, you know, acute pain, which comes from just life's injuries or disease and chronic pain is that in acute pain, you have some uh, current uh, tissue damage to deal with. Whereas in chronic pain, the injuries already occurred and now you're dealing with the after effects. I find it uh, interesting because people say almost with an apology, it's all in my head, but that's true of all pain. It's all in your head. Mm. Interesting when you think about that. Yeah, because you know, it's being transmitted up to here. Um how is it ever just in your head? Like, are does the people you've worked with before have they imagined a pain that wasn't there? And how would you even trace that down? Well, I do have a couple amputees I work with that have phantom pain. I'm sure mm -hmm. most people have heard about losing phantom a limb, limb and having yeah. Wow. Okay. I never even thought of that. So it, would that be the only thing that would be that type of pain that really doesn't exist? Well, I think uh, the first thing I always start with people is have them understand that we kind of feel pain or think about pain all as one thing, right? Like I have a, a you know toothache or I have a broken leg and my leg hurts, right? But when you're thinking of it as all one thing, there's not much you can do about it. So what I do is I help people break it down into five areas because you can intervene with pain at any one of these five parts of pain. And if you can knock off a little bit in each one of these areas, then what happens is we can take intolerable pain, make it tolerable and continue to function, right? We all function with some pain, uh, but then when it gets to a certain point, we can think of nothing else but the pain, and then we cease functioning. So if we can get whatever our pain level down to that point where we can tolerate it well enough to continue to do what we need to do, that's uh, a big success uh, in the area of pain management. 
Have you found some people have pain, then worry about it? I don't want to say hypochondriac to that level, but that just raises the pain because they're stressing out, worrying about what the treatment will be and all of that above them? Well, it's actually the fourth point of intervention. Hmm. When you think about when we actually experience pain, what happens is we have some receptors at wherever the, the tissue is going to be damaged or has been damaged, right? And those receptors feel pain or pressure, and they have to send that signal that's, you know, we think we feel, say, pain in a leg or in our tooth, but actually we don't. The only thing there is some kind of receptor to pick up what's going on at the wound site. Then that signal has to be transferred to the brain. There's a map of the body and the brain. So that those nerves, if we can interrupt the signal from the receptors, we can intervene. Uh, so we can intervene at the receptor, we can intervene at the signal, we can intervene in the actual brain map itself, which is much more significant with chronic pain because neurons that fire together wire together. So the reason we have chronic pain, it, even though the tissue damage is done is because the map has a bigger and bigger region for, for expressing the pain. And then the fourth area that you ask about is stress. And <clears throat> what happens is pain in itself is uh, triggers the stress response. So uh, we'll get some adrenaline. It's a threat, right? So if we're already tired, for instance, and then we have pain, the pain becomes unbearable, right? So mm -hmm. yes, if we manage uh, our stress, we can reduce the impact of and the intensity of pain. And the fifth area is uh, our relationship to pain. We all kind of get conditioned that if we have pain, we have to just stop what we're doing, stop the pain, you know, stop the damage, right? Because when we're kids, that's typically what it is. You got, you know, you break a leg and you got to stop walking on it, right? Well, uh, my professional NFL players that I coach, hmm. if they stop or if they stop training or if they link the pain to poor performance, that relationship to pain raises their stress level because they can't do their job and then they don't perform well, right? So one of the things that um, for, for people who, as they get older or if they're in situations where they have chronic pain, one of the biggest interventions is changing your relationship to pain. That mm. it, it's not learning to live with pain, in other words, that, making it your friend instead of something you avoid. So to answer your question there, not only the stress, but maybe some of the things that you've learned that pain signals to you may not be true. I'm intrigued about the the athletes, the professional athletes that you work with. Uh, they're always training. So they're always, you know, moving their body, obviously, maybe not so much if they have pain. That being said, in in your understanding, uh, learning, working with people. A lot of times when we have pain, we kind of slow down. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm going to take it easy. And then time goes on. Then they become sedentary. Then it just the body, especially when you get older, body starts changing. Would you say that it's important to keep moving forward? Literally keep moving. If you do have pain, obviously you can't risk any, um, uh, further damage or whatever it might be, check with your doctor. But what are your thoughts on that in working with athletes? That's exactly my point. And this is true of anybody is that we learn pain equals stop, right? Mm, yeah. So we get pain. Not only do we learn to stop and stop doing stuff, we start thinking because we're under some stress, I won't be able to do what I want to do. I won't be able to accomplish what I want to accomplish. In other words, it's like the pain is a wall. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the anticipation too, let's say 
I have arm pain. I'll be honest with you. I'm just about to make an appointment with a doctor. When I move it a certain way, maybe I tore something. I don't even know what it is. Got to check on it. I can do certain things, but I'm on guard because I may, you know, move it a certain way to reach back in the car and like, ah, oh, whoa, you know, and you'll feel a stabbing pain. Um, so to your point, we're on, you know, we're protecting ourselves. Uh, and that just makes us less, less mobile, I guess, which I don't think is a good thing. Then you gain weight, then you, you know, now you're not happy with yourself, you know, object at rest remains at rest, you know, and you don't move forward. Well, I think you bring up a good point. I think pain's intent is to get us to stop so we don't do more damage. So one of the things that shouldn't stop us from is going to get checked out to find out if we are doing damage. Mm. Right? So the first thing is to, to find out what's going on immediately. Back to the stress. Uncertainty creates stress. Hmm. Yes, it does. Now, and especially what we we're talking about the pain being, let's say you have leg pain and what a, you know, horrible feeling. And I believe I've been there a couple of times where you even just walking or stepping off a curb and you got to think and double check, you know, I'm always on guard. I'm always on guard. Cause what if I go to step, my leg gives out, then I fall. Now I got more issues. It's stress that that brings on. You're always worried about it. And the stress makes the pain, amplifies the pain. So, um, hmm. but we let pain stop us from doing the very thing that would help us with the pain. Because the first area we can do something about, the first intervention of the five, is manage the, the wound site the, the, where the receptors are. So if I twisted my leg, um, if I apply ice and I uh, have the proper wrap for it, right? Mm. Then I'm going to send less of a signal to the brain because I'm, I have less going on to tell my brain I'm in danger. So the first site is, you know, and that's where aspirin uh, or Motrin, whatever reduces the swelling, particularly dental pain people don't realize that most dental pain comes from swelling and they don't do the ice like the dentist tells them to do. Well, wh why take medication if all you have to do is sit with an ice bag on your cheek for 15, 20 minutes and get this swelling down? It's because we don't do the basic stuff, right? Mm. Either go to the doctor like you suggest or second, do good tissue care because that's the first line of defense in terms of dealing with pain. When you deal with people that have pain, where does that start and how does the, how do the sessions go? Well, it usually starts with they're overwhelmed hmm. and pain has got them stopped. And so the first thing like I'm doing today, I, I help them understand that pain isn't one thing. And yes, there's a lot of stuff you can do because whatever they've tried hasn't worked well enough to bring them through that level where they can tolerate the pain. And if you can't tolerate it, then you're overwhelmed and you're not functioning. So the first thing to do is give them a little hope, help divide the, the pain into its five parts, and then start helping them work through where will they get the biggest impact on their pain level. You know, all of this being said, uh, are there other ways to to deal like hypnotherapy? Would that even be a suggestion? Yeah, hypnosis, um, uh, and that gets to the second uh, area of intervention, which is the nerves from those receptors to the brain. What we have, if you ever, um, if you ever get like a bug bite <laughs> or mm -hmm. an ache and you rub, the area, you notice that the pain goes away, right? But unfortunately, it only goes away, it only lasts for a few moments, and then sure. and you can't sit there and continue to rub. That's because you disturb the signal from the receptor to the brain. Also, opioids uh, work on a nerve that goes to what we call the pain gateway. There's actually a uh, on the 
on the way up to the brain, there's actually a nerve that comes down in our back <laughs> to an area called the pain gateway. And it actually can attenuate the signal coming up to the brain. And we use that uh, if you've ever had like a toothache or a headache and then gone to work and all of a sudden the headache or toothache goes to the background because you're focused on your work. Mm -hmm. Well, your brain is turning down the signal because you have to pay more attention to the immediate concern. And opioids work on that pathway to turn the signal down. But we can use hypnotherapy to teach people how to turn the signal down. And I use a couple different visualizations under hypnotherapy. One is I have people focus on the, the pain and I ask them to draw a box around it and then put an edge on the box, which is just the opposite of what we usually do. What we usually do are busy trying to avoid the pain instead of focusing on it. And one of the immediate things they realize is that the more they focus, the harder it is to find the pain, which has some interesting psychological impact in itself. Yeah, for sure. It, so it, anyway, I have them visualize the box, pick a color for the box, because under hypnotherapy, we can change perception. So say they pick blue. I say, okay, saturated is dark as your um, pain is. So they'll hmm. say, oh, it's a dark, dark blue. So now fade the color. And as you fade the color, the pain will go. And when the box is clear, erase the line and the pain will be gone. And strangely enough, I'd say probably 70% of my patients, the pain goes away. Wow. You know, I, I, you bring back a, a couple of thoughts in my mind that when you go to the doctor, even the dentist, before they give you an injection, even if it's a painkiller, a lot of times they'll, let's say if it's in your arm, they'll move, they'll massage an area near the injection and then give the injection. And usually you don't even feel it. I needed right. like 10 injections, I don't know, about a year ago um, for to numb pain for a little bit of minor surgery. And he's like, you still feel it? I'm like, yeah, I feel a little bit of pain. And he just kept doing that. And it was so minimized. And I also know people who are hypnotherapists and will hypnotize themselves before a dental procedure that any of the rest of us, we need a painkiller and it doesn't even hurt them. So I'm one of those, I'm one of those people. Really? Yes. Tell, tell, tell us more. I'm intrigued. So you, you hypnotize yourself before uh, let's say a painful procedure or pain that, you know, even if it's intermittent pain that's coming um, and you, it minimizes or you don't feel it. Correct. Because I'm able to, <clears throat> at that point I can, I'm managing the pain gateway, that nerve. So I can turn the gate down. I'm also managing that third area, which is my stress response. I'm bringing my stress response or, and then, there's a pain map in our brain, right? And I can actually uh, interrupt the pain on that map by uh, visualizing uh, the, the signal there is a fire and I'm putting cool water on it and turning those neurons off. Hmm. And of course, I've already changed my relationship to pain, like the dentist isn't gonna be that big a deal for me. It's not gonna stop me. It's not an awful threat. I'm looking forward to getting my my uh, dental work done, right? So I'm able to by approach, and I do use ice afterwards to get, keep the swelling down. So I'm able to break the the uh, pain down into its uh, parts, and then be able to do something about it. Interesting. Um, would you say it a lot of its visualization and minimizing your stress? Because I'm thinking that. Half of it is the stress and anticipation of what it's going to feel like, how you're going to react to it, right? Well, as we've talked about before, the midbrain where the emotions are operates on sensations. So you can't reason with yourself, oh, you can't tell yourself, oh, this this dental visit's good for me and change how you feel. 
right? But what you can do is you can visualize um, something pleasant going on in your mouth, right? Besides hammer picks and drills, right? Right. You can visualize the visualization bigger skill being all the senses, including sounds. Like you can visualize the sound of the drill as an airplane winding up for a journey. Change how you visualize that sound. And it goes from this terrifying shriek to like, okay, we're getting ready for our way to go. Mm -hmm. So yes, visualization changes our emotions and stress is basically an emotional response. I will say I've changed my outlook on even going to the the doctor or any anything related to that. And it used to be, oh, I gotta go, I gotta find the time. You know, I don't I don't it could hurt and all of that. I've reframed it to I'm taking care of myself. What a great thing. Exactly. Fantastic. I'm going, you know, to the doctor and this is going to be a good thing. That's actually made a big difference. <laughs> yeah. And, and it starts with a decision. That's how you're going to approach it. Right. And when you start with that decision, it still takes a half a dozen trips to actually feel that way. I think some people think, oh, I'll make that decision and it should work on the first trip. No, it's something you have to change your, you have to make a decision to change your attitude. And then it takes a few experiences for an attitude change to actually manifest itself in some emotional change. Well, like we're all talking about here, the, the whole concept here in the mind and the pain is you're reframing, remapping how you respond to it. So yeah, like you'd said, it's going to take a little bit of um, work on your mind to change the mindset that uh, going to the dentist isn't so bad. It's not going to be, it's, you know, it's not like they, they're, 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 you know, pulling every single tooth in your mouth, you know, <laughs> for most of us. Um, if somebody works with you, how does it begin on the, and, and do most, uh, do some people just come to you just for minimizing or, or, or working on the pain? Yes. People, uh, the main people that come to me are people who are preparing for some surgery or some procedure. Hmm. And, and they want to go through the experience with the least amount of pain. I have quite a few people who come that their pain meds stop working. Unfortunately, the thing that was the solution becomes a problem. Now they have a dependency. So now they got two problems. They got the pain and now they got a dependency on the painkiller that doesn't work. Hmm. So the, those are really pretty tough, tough cases. And then, of course, there's people who come to me because they have anxiety or stress, not realizing that chronic pain sets them up for that stress and irritability and stuff. And then if we get rid of the background pain, then they're much more able to handle the rest of life without anxiety and frustration. And I want to share with everybody that uh, you're no stranger to pain yourself. We've talked before in other episodes where you suffered a major, major accident. And I'm sure there was a there, uh, years, years of pain that you went through. So you know what you're talking about. I, and I truly mean that with all respect. Yes. Well, 35% second and third degree burns recalibrates what you would call pain. Can't imagine. Um, wow. <laughs> like I said, you're somebody that's no stranger to it. Um, Roger, how do we find you? If somebody's dealing with pain, the anticipation of a procedure or something going on, how do they connect with you? Uh, they can reach me at Dr. Levine, D-O-C-T-O-R-L-A-V-I-N-E dot com. Uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah. I'm so glad we talked about this today. It's something that even with a, a psychologist, that's something that usually I believe comes up in a conversation uh, and and many of us probably don't even think that it's an option to help us deal with our pain. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much for being here today. Another great day. Thank you, Steve, for getting the word out. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on streama.com and online radiobox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay. 